here is just a quick video on simplifying radicals. A radical is really just another name for a square root. <clears throat> and the difference with simplifying compared to estimating is that with simplifying, you'll probably still have a square root at the end, whereas estimating, you end up with a decimal. So for example, I look to see if there's any perfect squares that can multiply together to equal 200. So for example, the square root of 100 times 2 would equal 200, and then the square root of 100 is 10. So estimating the square root of 200, or sorry, it can be simplified to 10 square root of 2. Remember that that means that it's 10 times the square root of 2. This one, what would the perfect square be that's inside of 75? Yep, it would be 25. So 25 times 3 is 75, and then the square root of 25 is 5. Square root of 3, we just leave it, and that's it. Now, with adding radicals, think of it just as if you're adding um, numbers with decimals. So if you had 3x plus 4x, this would be 7x's. The same as if you had um, 2x plus x, there's that hidden 1 there, so that would be 3x. So you do the same thing. So this would be 10 square root of 3 plus 11 square root of 3 would be 21 square root of 3. And over here, this we would have that hidden 1, so there would be 11 square root of 5. And then the last little piece are radical expressions where they have some variables in there. Remember that taking a square root of something that's squared, pretty much just the two negate each other and it becomes x. So for example, um, if you had 5 squared, taking the square root, what would be left inside is just the 5. So here, this x squared can come out and just be x, and we can simplify the 18 to be 9 and 2, and we can take that 3, square root of 2. And then over here, this, we can take two of these x's out, but one's going to stay inside the square root. The y, we can take those two out and make it one, and then I'll deal with the 50 after. And then the 50 would be square root of 25 times 2. So 5xy square root of 2x.